Welcome back to Revelation Bible Study at St. Paul. I'm Vicar Josh. Let's get into Revelation. Um, this video, as you know, referenced by the title right about there, um, is on Revelation 15. Um, so, introducing the chapter, uh, we just finished, if you've been watching these videos through, in chapter 14, we just finished a um, a look at kind of these overarching cosmic events surrounding the events of scripture. Um, we, we looked at stuff as early as the devil's fall from heaven, which uh, at least we assume takes place even before the stories of Genesis. Um, and then we looked, we, we got a glimpse at the final victory, which takes place, at, uh, I guess, in Revelation um but at kind of the culmination after all of the New Testament. So that's where we're coming from. And what that was is that was a brief intermission between these sets of visions that have been going throughout Revelation. So um, several chapters back, you start with there's a scroll. And the scroll contains the plan, uh, God's plan for salvation for his people. And there are seven seals on that scroll. And you go through the seven seals and it talks about each one of those prophetically. And then from there it goes to seven trumpets. And scenes that go with that. And what is important to keep in mind in Revelation is these events are probably concentric. So it's probably, I'm going to tell you about these seven events over here. And they happen one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm going to tell you about these seven events over here. But they don't happen after those first seven events. They happen at the same time. But they're broken up in these groups of seven. Um, so this is going back to that. This is the third vision of seven things. So, and those numbers are significant. Seven is a number of completion. Three is obviously the number of the Trinity. But this is the third and last vision of events on earth. Um, so we're going to move into these angels with the censors. And I have to be honest, this chapter 15 is a pretty quick chapter. Um, there's not a ton in it because it's kind of setting up for what is going to be going forward. So we're going to, we're going to get through this. Um, and if you feel like you need to watch a video, if you feel like it's not long enough and you need more Bible study, um, there's all sorts of content on St. Paul's YouTube page. Go ahead and subscribe right down there. Um, but, uh, and you can always go back and watch the other Revelation videos. Uh, last Friday, we released one on Revelation 2 that clocked in, I believe, at 1 hour and 30 minutes. So, um, yeah. Anyway, we're going to move forward in Revelation 15, as promised, by the title. So, get your Bible out. It's a lot easier to follow along if you actually have it in front of you. Um, whether that be a physical Bible or your handy dandy cellular phone that has a handy dandy um, app. In case you don't have a Bible app, there, there's an app called, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. No, the glare is too much. Um, it's called the YouVersion app. And it, it looks like this. It's, it's really easy to use, really simple to, to navigate. Um, and from like a program, it, for those of you who don't know, I was a computer science minor in undergrad. Um, from like a programming aesthetic and graphic design and all of those, kind, like an objective standpoint, it's a very nice app. So if you don't have a Bible app and you don't have a Bible in front of you, download this Bible app and navigate yourself to Revelation 15 because that's where we're going right now. Um, we're going to start with the first four verses. And it says, Then I saw another sign in heaven. Great and amazing, seven angels with seven plagues, which are the last. For with them the wrath of God is finished. And I saw what appeared to be a sea of glass mingled with fire. And also those who had conquered the beast and its image and the number of its name, standing beside the sea of glass with harps of God in their hands. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and amazing are your deeds, O Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. Who will not fear, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship you. 
for your righteous acts have been revealed. And that's what we're stepping into here. Um, so it's, it's setting up for these seven angels that are carrying seven plagues. It's, it's very upfront about that, um, which is terrifying that, you know, these are messengers of God. These are servants of God going forward at God's command and they're carrying plagues, which brings up this, this idea of, uh, this question that, that comes up a lot, um, of if God is good and God is all powerful, then why do bad things happen in the world? I, I think we have <laughs> we have pretty we have a literal plague going on with the COVID nineteen the coronavirus, and I think a lot of people are asking, why is God letting this happen? And if you're expecting me to now come forward with some great pearl of wisdom explaining why God is letting this happen, you are going to be disappointed because I don't know, and nobody does. And if someone tells you that they know, they're lying to you and probably have uh, an inflated view of themselves because God doesn't, hasn't told us why. Um, but we do know this. We do know that God is good and that he is all powerful. So he is going to work all things together for the good of those who love him and for his glory. Um, which is a little bit of a tangent, but as we talk about angels bringing plagues, I feel like that's probably on people's hearts and minds, so we should address it. But there's a comforting aspect to this, and it, it, it comes right, right following this seven angels with seven plagues, which are the last, which are the last. That's that's the the passage that I the verse part of the verse that I want to key in on. Because it's saying, "For with them the wrath of God is finished." So we've, we, if you've been with us in Revelation, if you've read Revelation yourself, you see again and again kind of God's wrath being poured out on the earth. And here we're told it's done. After these things happen, there is no more wrath. Uh, which is incredible. That's something awesome to look forward to when the wrath of God is completely done and out. Um, so that's, that's pretty sweet. And that's, I think why this is referred to as a great sign. That's, that's what it starts off with. I saw another sign in heaven, great and amazing. This is the sign of the end of God's wrath of the, of the end of the brokenness of creation. This is, you know, we're coming up on the time where God restores everything to what it should be. So yeah, this, I mean, this is terrifying, but this is also a great, an amazing sign for us. Um, so as we walk forward, the question might come up, who are these angels? Seven angels who are holding uh, the seven plagues. They're probably uh, not the same ones that we talk about earlier in Revelation. There are seven angels of the seven churches. There are seven trumpet angels. Um, the grammar around these is a little different in how they're referred to and it... Um, in the Greek with articles and, and other, uh, I guess, surrounding grammatical structures that would lead us to believe that this is a separate group of seven angels. That's not to say they aren't connected because we're, we're still seeing angels that are kind of mediating this conflict between church and world. And we're still seeing angels that are going forward with God's work and wrath. So is it possible that these are the same seven angels throughout? Yes. Do I think it really changes our understanding of these events either way? Not a ton. Um, not a ton. But So these seven angels, I, I'm sorry I can't get more specific, but the text isn't much more specific than that, and I'm not going to make stuff up. Um, it goes forward, and in verse 2 it says, I saw what appeared to be a sea of glass mingled with fire, um, and those who had conquered the beast and its image standing beside the sea of glass with harps of God. Um, if you've been with us again, and if, if you haven't been, don't worry, I am working on getting all of the videos to get you caught up. Um, John has a vision of heaven. And in that vision of heaven, he sees around the throne of God, a sea that is like glass. It is still, it is perfect, it is calm. Um, 
sort of symbolic of, of creation being completely at peace. And this turmoil that we typically, if you look at the ocean and see the turmoil, that kind of, it's just not there anymore. So there's this glassy, uh, this glassy sea referenced here that we can connect to that. And we can kind of see heaven and earth getting closer and closer. But there's also evidence of a battle here. There's, there's fire, and those who conquered are standing there. And this is essentially like a, a, a victory scene of God's people uh, after the battle with the, the devil and his beasts and his servants. Um, and God's people came out victorious. If you've been with us the last couple chapters, it's it's been a tough road for God's people. And that's what we experience, I think, in our in the real world. Is the world can be tough for us, God's people. But this is a promise that we come out victorious. And I, I have a discussion for you that is going to be below. What does it look like for the church to be victorious over the devil and the idols of the world? And this is like a final victory that we're looking for. But what, I guess, are the smaller victories that we see on a more regular basis? Um, go ahead and pause the video, interact with that discussion, and then come back to us. And as we come back, we're, we're going to continue. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God in the song of the Lamb. Um, Moses, obviously, great leader of the Israelites. He, he was instructed by God to take them out of Egypt. Um, so he and his brother Aaron led the people out of Egypt. Moses was uh, a prophet. Um, he, he was used by God to bring about the plagues of Egypt. So there's this connection here, um, because this song is reflective of one in Exodus 14, when the slaves are free, when the Israelite slaves are freed from Egypt. So we're seeing this, this victory and it's being connected to the victory of the old Testament where God brought his people out of the darkness of Egypt and in this way, God is finally bringing his people out of the darkness of sin and our slavery to death and the devil and the brokenness of creation. Um, so that's a, a cool parallel between the Exodus and Revelation. Um, this looks funny. I don't know why. I'm looking at myself in the camera sometimes and beside the point. Um, so they go into this victory sign and it's celebratory. And it points to this ultimate deliverance that Christ brings to us, which again is the entire point of the book of Revelation. It is the final revelation of Jesus Christ. It is the ultimate ending, the ultimate result of all of his work. And that's that's what we're looking at here. Um, so that's what it's pointing to. And what I think is really cool is that this can be our prayer as well. Our, our prayer of deliverance, uh, and it may be less reflective of victory, but we're praying for this. Ultimately, yes, over sin, death, and the devil, but this can also be our prayer over the virus. A prayer of deliverance. Uh, great and amazing are your deeds. Uh, just and true are your ways. Who will not fear and glorify your name? And I think this is a really good reminder for us right now. In the midst of this, that our God is a great deliverer. He is our deliverer. Um, so, continuing forward, it talks about uh, you alone are holy. And this is referring, of course, to God. All nations will come and worship you for your righteous acts have been revealed. So, there's a key point here. Only God is holy. That is it. There is nothing else that is holy. And I think this... this conflicts with our lived experience a little bit because there are other things we treat as holy and some of those it's on because of their connection to god that we treat them as holy whether that be uh times of worship or or the scriptures or other things that we treat as holy and if it's because of their connection to god i can see that and and i think that's fair but i think there are a lot of other things that we treat as holy out of tradition or self-preference or our opinion. And this can be all sorts of things. Um, we treat things with reverence. We treat things with special deference. Um, and they become idols in our lives. So my question for you is, and, and this is 
down below and you can answer this for yourself or you can answer for things that you see in the world around us. What are other things that we treat as holy? And again, I want you to pause this video and tap your space bar or, or click the pause button. Um, if you're watching on a Google Home, I think you can just go like this and then it'll shut or it'll pause the video. Um, but pause it and go down and interact with that and then come back. And as we come back, uh, we continue through this. His righteous act has been revealed. This, this finality of his righteous judgment. This is the book of Revelation. And what is really cool is that it says all nations will come and worship you. So the purpose of this is to move the unbelieving world to repentance before it is too late. This is praising God in his perfect judgment as he brings even more people to himself. So there is always hope. There is always hope that the Holy Spirit will work in the hearts and minds of people and bring them to repentance. And that's the first four verses of this chapter. But we're, we're going to finish up here and look at the last four verses. Verse, verses 5 through 8. Um, so again, pull out your Bible. Pull up your Bible. Whatever it takes. Um, uh, John says, After this I looked, and the sanctuary of the tent of witness in heaven was opened. And out of the sanctuary came the seven angels with the seven plagues clothed in pure bright linen with golden sashes around their chests. And one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls, full of the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. And the sanctuary was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no one could ever enter the sanctuary until the seven plagues of the seven angels were finished. So, Again, walking through this, we have the sanctuary of the tent of witness. And as modern readers, as Christians, we're like, what on earth is that talking about? Well, that is talking about the uh, God's dwelling place in the midst of his people. If you go back into the Old Testament, this is the same language that is used for the tabernacle. For God dwelling in the midst of his people and being with his people. So this is God with his people in heaven is being opened up. The, the place where he dwells is being opened up, and that's where these angels are coming out from. Um, and it goes into a description of these angels that says, uh, in pure bright linen. So their, their robes are shining and clean. They've been in the presence of God. So it's reflective of that glory. And if you look through the Old Testament and the New Testament, when people are in contact with the divinity, they come out shining and clean. Uh, Moses in the Old Testament, when he went up and spoke with God, his face was shining and it was, it was so freaky that the people of Israel made him like wear a cloth over his face, um, until he stopped shining. Cause they were like, we are not worthy of, of even being in this reflection of God's glory. So these angels in the same way are shining because they've been in the presence of God and it goes forward and it says they have seven golden sashes, um, or with golden sashes around their waist. This is indicative of royalty or high honor. So in combination with their robes, what this is saying is they are going forward with the blessing of God, with the authority of God, um, with the, in, they've been instructed by God to do what they are about to do. They're acting on behalf of Christ. Um, so that's what we have in the angels here. And then it says, uh, the, one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls full of God's wrath. Um, again, this is from a past chapter of Revelation. We did talk about the four living creatures quite a bit. And these, we're not 100% sure of a lot, but we do know they are the highest of God's servants. They are with him and in his presence all the time. So these highest of God's servants are passing these censers, these bowls full of God's wrath to the angels. These bowls are the judgment of God. The seven angels are simply the, the dispensaries of these. They're just carrying them out. So this is all an act of God. This is all God's judgment going on. Um, and these the sanctuary being filled with smoke and the glory of God from his power. Um... Smoke is symbolic of the divine presence of God. 
throughout the scriptures, Old Testament, New Testament, uh, it comes up a lot where something is filled with smoke or surrounded by a cloud and, and that's God's presence. Um, so in the midst of all this setup, uh, God's presence is being hinted at and pointed to again and again and again and again. So that we can't dismiss this as anything but God's will. Um, so that is chapter 15. And like I said, it is a setup for what we're going to get to going forward. Um, you have to wait. Uh, the, the video for chapter 16 will be out next week. Um, if you have any remaining questions about Revelation or anything else, put them in the comments below and I will do my best to get to them, to reply to them. Um, and let you know at least what I think, what I what I know, what I can come up with uh, from Scripture, or an admission that I don't know. Um, so, again, that's Revelation 15. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, like I said earlier, subscribe to the St. Paul page, and then you'll get notifications about our live worship services, our Bible studies, our podcasts, <coughs> our chapel services for the kiddos, our, our confirmation classes. Um, we have more. We have another Bible study that's probably going to be come out, coming out pretty soon. Not on Revelation, a, another topic. Um, so there's a lot of exciting stuff. So make sure you subscribe, so uh, you get all of that as it comes out. Um, and with that, brothers and sisters, go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.